wait, don't leave, do not leave. I'm almost done with my nap and then I'm gonna show you guys how I got this finish on this bench. If you are new here, my name is Kristana. I am a furniture artist, so welcome to my channel. If you are not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell and you'll get all the latest video, yes, all the latest video notifications. Everything I use will always be in the description below. Today I'm gonna be working on a church pew, okay? I live in Germany and before anyone wants to hurt me because I'm painting this, it is a custom, and when they're customs, I do what my client says. So we are going to try to, what we're gonna do is make this over, but I'm going to try to make it Gothic, European. Do some patina on here. So that way it kind of sticks with what the theme of this furniture is, okay? So let me show you this bench. Let me show you this pew first. Okay, so here's the pew. It's pretty simple, but it does have some really cute, cool features to it. So let me show you. So it does have a side right here. The other side is a little bit different. I'm gonna pull it around and show you the other side. All right, so here's the other side. It's got a little bit more going on. Hold on. Okay, so here's the other side. It's got a little bit more going on on here. So we are going to try to work with the details of this bench. Pew, I keep calling it a bench. It's a pew. We're gonna work with the details of this, try to make it awesome. I wanna show you the back. So here's the back of the piece. Let's get a little bit closer. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in. I wanna zoom in and I wanted to show you this. So the back of this piece actually flips down and this is where they kept the Bibles. And so we're going to clean this up. I'll probably big mama's butt of this inside. And obviously I'm not gonna take anything off of this pew. Not going to take anything off, not gonna put new locks on there, nothing like We're that. We're going to do a textured, kind of old world look on this to go with the other piece that it is going to be with. Also kind of stay within the theme of an old Gothic church pew from Europe. Again, this is getting painted and that's the end of the story. So let's get started. We are going to prep this piece, do any kind of repairs, clean it, all the things before we really get into the cool technique. So if you wanna say that, stay tuned. I always clean my piece first. I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning here. I did two things of water. One is just clean water and the other one has Dixie Belle White Lightning. I knew this piece was gonna be really dirty and so I don't wanna keep having to make another formula of White Lightning and waste it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean it and I'm going to rinse my rag out in the other bucket that just has warm water so that I can get most of the dirt out of that one. And then the other one has the white lightning so I don't have to keep remaking formulas because a lot of times if you use the same bucket, you're gonna have to remake your white lightning and you just end up wasting it. So this is just water where I rinse out my rag and then I go into my white lightning bucket and re re up, I guess, my rag with some white lightning. And you can see the difference. There, This water won't be so gross and disgusting to where I can, it goes a little bit further. Dixie Belle has come out with brand new decoupage rice paper. And this one is the whimsical Mediterranean decoupage paper. I love using rice paper because I am not good at decoupage. So this is great for anyone who's just starting or isn't that great at it. I'm going to put it on the back of here. So this piece, I'm gonna cut it up in little pieces. So you'll see, I'm just gonna kind of use this with my finger so that I know where it goes and it makes a crease. So you could do that or you could measure it, whatever you wanna do, but I need to cut little pieces because I just want these to be in specific sections on this piece. And so that's why I'm cutting them so that I can decoupage in sections. I really like using Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat when I decoupage. So I put it on first and you wanna think of it this way. When I put it on the surface, it's 
acting as almost a glue for your paper. So I like to put it on a little bit thick, not gloppy or sloppy, but thick enough to where your paper is going to stick to the surface. I'm putting it on here and I'm kind of smoothing it out and then I'm going to put my paper on, kind of smooth it out with my hands. That way it's nice and adhered to the surface. Then I'm going to take, I'm using a foam brush. You can use whatever you want, but I like foam brushes because they're flat. So they allow me to kind of flatten it out. This is rice paper, so there's fibers in it. So it's not going to be super, super smooth. Just understand that. But what I'm doing is I'm smoothing it out with the excess satin clear coat that I had on there anyways. And now I'm going to put more satin clear coat over top of it. This will keep it in place. This will help protect it. You can put this on here and then you can wait for it to dry and you can put another layer. You can put, you know, two, three layers if you want, and that will protect that decoupage paper. This will also allow me to smooth it out a little bit more. But again, remember this is a rice paper, so it's got fibers. You can see them. This is great for those more rustic finishes again for beginners because it's not going to rip super easily. So this is how I'm going to decoupage this brand new rice paper onto here. Okay, everybody, so I have decoupaged this rice paper on the back of here. As you can see, we have some tannins coming through. Look at it. I wanted that to happen. I want this to happen because we're going to be doing an old world look on here anyways, and I'm going to be waxing it. So I knew that this would happen. After you work with furniture so much, you know what's going to happen. Once you clean a piece of furniture, you look at it, you know that there's going to be tannins. So I knew that these were going to come through and I'm okay with it. But I thought, let's make this a teachable moment. So I'm going to show you, even though I don't mind this, I'm going to show you how to prevent tannins from coming through when you decoupage, okay? So I didn't plan on doing this, but I felt this is a teachable moment, so let's do it. So what you would need is you're gonna need a blocking primer. So right here I have my Dixie Belle Boss and I'm using clear. I'm using clear because I didn't use any paint underneath these, so I want it to be all the same. So what you're going to do, we're gonna just work on this little section right here. What you're going to do is you're going to do two coats of your boss. So I'm gonna do my first coat of boss. I'm gonna let it sit for a few hours. I'm gonna do my second coat of boss, let it sit for a few hours, and then I'm going to decoupage over top of it. I'm going to show you how it's gonna make a huge difference. So if you do not want tannins or you don't want this, cause this is what the paper looked like before, okay? If you don't want this white paper turning this color, you are going to need to use a blocking primer the same as you would if you were painting white when you are using or putting it over furniture that has bleed through, okay? This is an old oak piece. I knew when I was cleaning it, it was super dirty, that I was probably gonna have problems with bleed through. It has an old stain on it. This would be definitely one of those pieces that if I were painting this a light color, I would have put a blocking primer on it. Also know that if you are decoupaging with a light paper, you would wanna put a blocking primer on it if you don't want this aged look. So I'm gonna show you guys right now, we're gonna do a coat of boss, second coat of boss in a few hours, and then we'll decoupage on here and I'll show you the difference. All right, so you're gonna take your blocking primer right here, I'm using Dixie Belle's Boss and Clear. It does have a little bit of a tint to it, but it dries clear, I promise. So I'm going to just put one coat of this on here. You allow it to dry and after a few hours, I'm gonna put a second coat on there. And the reason why you wait a few hours is because you really want that blocking primer to lock in those tannins. So you wanna give it ample time to do what it's meant to do. I'm gonna put this on here, I'm smoothing it out. I'm using my high quality synthetic brush because I want the surface to be nice and smooth. I am going to, after a few hours, after my second coat, 
And after a few hours of that, I'm going to add the satin clear coat on here just like I did before. Remember, this is going to act as a glue or an adhesive for your paper. So right now we are doing the actual decoupage process. The first part of it though is to put your blocking primer on there. You need two coats. So one coat, you allow it to dry for a few hours, put your second coat, allow it to dry for a few hours, then go in and do your decoupage. So now I'm putting my paper on here and you can see the difference in color. I'm adding my satin clear coat on top of that paper to lock it in, make sure that it's protected, smooth it out, and I'm going to allow this to dry. I'm gonna walk away and allow it to dry and you can see the difference in the color. So again, remember, I didn't mind the tannins coming through, but if you are gonna be putting decoupage paper right on raw wood, you really need to use a blocking primer, especially if that paper is lighter. So right here, you can see the difference. So it's really important for you to use a blocking primer if you do not want to have an aged look on your decoupage paper. I'm gonna go through with Dixie Belle's Antebellum Blue and put a coat, just one coat, on the entire piece. I am gonna go around and kind of create a border around those decoupage papers because I just want that design to peek through a little bit and you'll see that later. But I, this color is dark enough that I don't need a blocking primer and also it's just going to be a base coat that allows that color to kind of show through a little bit. I did want to add a little bit of a blue color in because it goes with the design. So this will show through just a little bit later on. If you don't care about a color showing through later on, you can just go right in with the texture. But for this, I did a base coat because I want blue to show through. I only just did one coat of antebellum blue on this entire piece. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I am going to figure out what my next step is. So I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit. I'm gonna put some texture on this piece to go underneath our final color. So our final color over top of everything will be drop cloth and we'll be antiquing it. But I'm gonna put two different colors of texture underneath that and everything will start to make sense in a little bit. But one of the colors I'm gonna do is French linen because I wanna keep it neutral, but I also want to have a little bit of a difference when I sand back. But I also want a little bit more color in here. So we're gonna use muscadine wine, okay? And muscadine wine is a wine color. And what I did is I went through and I looked, here it is, at this, and this matches perfectly to the paper that we're using. But I did wanna explain something to you really quick. So if it didn't match the paper I was using, or even if it did, I wanna show you sometimes how I pick colors. So I have my color wheel right here. And because we're gonna go with the antebellum blue is, I would say it's probably in the blue green category. Either it's in the blue green category, blue category, whatever, okay? So this color wheel right here, it tells me if you look at these, a split complementary color is a red. Even if this was the blue green, if we went with blue green, a red tone is a split complementary color. And then blue is a triad, which blue, yellow, and red, those are your primary colors anyways. But if you look at the triad, so it blue and red are in the same one. So either way, if we classify it as one of these colors, red is still a complementary color. And this goes with all tones, right? So this is a blue, greenish, blue tone. And that's this one right here is a reddish tone. It doesn't have to be bright red, but this will kind of show you the color. So remember blue, green, you've got your split complementary right here. And if I went, so I, what I did is I started it with red. Okay, so let's turn it up. So I've got red and if I go down, the blue is in the triad, yellow is in my triad, right? These are complementary. My actual complementary color is green. That's the that's the most complement, the one that complements red the most. But if you look at split, you've got your blue green and you've got your yellow green right here, which is where we have it. So that, I have a video, I will link it down below that teaches you how to read this. But a lot of times I pull this out. And again, you know, in my head I was like, okay, there's red in here, I'm gonna pull this. And I was just for, just to see, I wanted to see if it would show it up in here and it, sh it does. So 
that kind of shows you that a lot of times when people design things like this, they probably use a color wheel or they have an understanding of color theory and that is why they use the colors that they do in here. Because if you look at this, it's got blues and reds and it's got a kind of orangish red color, a red orange color. So these are all kind of colors that mix together in the color wheel. Hopefully that explains it. Now I'm gonna go mix some sea spray in with these paints, so that'll be our next step. Now that the base coat is dry, I'm gonna add some texture. So we're gonna use muscadine wine. I'm gonna pour some of the paint into my mixing bowl, mixing cup, whatever you use. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of texture at a time. So I don't measure it so much as I go by look. In the end result here, I want a thick, almost brownie-like batter consistency. So you'll see that I just add a little tiny bit at a time and I make sure that it is thoroughly stirred each time that I do it. And at the very end, I'm gonna have a thicker batter, you know, brownie batter-like consistency. And that is really the end goal that I get, that I want to be at. Now that I have the consistency I want, I'm gonna take a cheap chip brush and I'm just going to stipple it all over the piece. I'm going to choose in different sections. So it's not gonna be all over. The red is not gonna be all over the piece. I'm going to actually choose little sections and I'm not gonna make the texture super thick. I just want it to where when I do sand later on, it's gonna show through that drop cloth that we're gonna use. And so I'm just kind of adding texture in random areas. That way when I sand later, and you'll see actually this spot, you'll see later when it shows through. But the French linen is the one that I'm gonna make next. I'm going to make the batter the exact same way that I did with the muscadine wine batter. And I am going to put this on the entire piece. Once I'm done creating my batter and I have it at the thick consistency that I want, I'm going to, again, put it all over the piece. But you're going to see something a little bit different here. I'm gonna put it on lightly in some areas, and then I'm going to kind of create a little circle. And these areas are where I'm gonna put my texture on a little bit more thick. So you're gonna see right here, I'm gonna put a little bit more texture in that little circle area that I just created. This is because later on when it dries, it's going to crack, and these are the areas that I'm gonna have big chunks taken out. So remember, we want an old school kind of medieval patina look. And with those thicker areas, I am going to be able to take my metal spatula, metal scraper and pull them up. And that's going to expose a larger distressed kind of old world chippy concrete fell off the wall look. So that is why those thicker areas are there. Once it's completely dry, I'm going to go over it with my drop cloth on the entire piece and I'm only gonna do one layer because I don't really mind that some of those other colors are showing through. So don't get too crazy about it. If it doesn't have completely full coverage, you want it to kind of look like this on the screen. Once this is totally dry, you're gonna do this next part. And I'm not gonna lie, this next part is one of my most fun parts. If you don't want big chunks taken out, but you like this look, then you can just do the texture without the big chunks and just do an even small texture throughout the piece. But what I'm doing is taking a metal scraper right here. You can use the corners to lift it up. You can go across it and just pull it up. But this is one of my favorite parts. It's kind of stress relieving actually. And you can control how much you want to pull off and how, or how little you want to pull off. 
After I'm done going through and doing the big chunks taken out, I go through with the same scraper and I go across on the sides and things like that. So that way I can make a more chippy look and you'll see that. So that is what I'm doing for the next step. Once I've used my scraper on all the places I want, I'm going to go in with my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray and I'm going to expose the color underneath. So remember earlier I said that that red, you're going to see it? That is right here, the same spot. And this will expose that red, those blues. So you're going to take your sander. You could do this by hand if you really want to but it's probably gonna be better if you do your sander and you can expose all those colors underneath by taking your sander to your piece after you pull all that chippiness off. The last step is to add a colored wax. Before I do that, I like to put a clear wax on before I do any colored waxes. It allows me to pull back that colored wax a little bit more easy. And so I am taking the easy peasy spray wax, I'm putting it all over the entire piece and then I'm going to rub it in with my microfiber cloth. I'm gonna allow this to dry for about, I'd say a half an hour to an hour before I go in with my colored wax. The colored wax that I chose was the Grunge Gray Besting Wax. And I'm going to take my besting brush, which is brand new by Dixie Bell, and I'm going to put it on my entire piece. I put it on here and then I wipe away the excess right away. That way it is a subtle look, but it's not super, super dark. Okay, so when I wipe this back, it's still gonna have an aged look to it, but it's not gonna be quite as dark as your black or your dark wax. I'm gonna take a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna wipe away the excess and then I will come back 15 to 20 minutes later and buff that in. But I will show you on the back how you can see that this is a very subtle aged look. If you want it to be darker, you can leave it a little bit. You, can, you don't have to wipe away quite as much or you can layer the wax to make it darker. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. It was kind of sticking with the gothic old world feel of it. So here is the whole piece right there. And I showed it to my client. He loves it. And so it is going to go in his home. They will be moving here from Germany back to the US. They are military as well. If you guys are not subscribed, please hit that button, hit the subscribe button, and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Also remember everything I use in the, is, everything I use is in the description below. 
Thank you guys so much for watching and happy creating. Have an awesome week, everybody, and I will see you next video. Ciao. Yesterday I lost a battle, trying that I'll cross so oh, to keep you, babe. Oh, to keep you, babe. Behind